Welcome to No Place Like Home, coming to you on Pinellas County Connection TV. This program is presented to you as an opportunity to hear information that can help you fulfill the dream of owning your very own home. We also share information about upcoming special events and programs to help you enjoy the good life in Pinellas County. The sponsor of this program is the Housing Finance Authority of Pinellas County, which offers the First Time Home Buyers Program. I'm Carmen Lemberg, alongside Julian Hills, your host for today's show. Good morning, Julian. How are you? Happy New Year, Carmen. Happy New Year to you, too. Too. It's another one. We're going to just have a great one this year, aren't we? Well, we're going to try. Do you have any resolutions? Mm, no. I, I did not bother with those this year. Um, my only resolution is that it's going to be a better year than last year. <laughs> well, that, that, sounds, that sounds like a very reasonable one. Um, I don't have any either, but I, hopefully someone watching today will have the resolution of buying a new home. Wouldn't that be awesome? Well, and we can help them do that, and our guests are here to help them do that, too. <laughs> exactly. You knew exactly where I was going. Well, continuing our conversation about the home buying process, today we'll cover the roles of realtors and title companies and how important they are. Today we'll be speaking with Liliana Rincon with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services and Pamela Wright with First American Title Insurance Company. Before we begin our discussion, Carmen, I know you have a message from our sponsor, the Housing Finance Authority. I do. Thank you. The Housing Finance Authority of Pinellas County is offering the First Time Home Buyers Program, your key to home ownership, helping people in Pinellas, Pasco, and Polk counties make their dreams of home ownership a reality. The First Time Home Buyers Program is for individuals who have never owned a home, have not owned a home in the last three years, or veterans. The HFA, working through a specialized group of lenders, offers a low rate on its 30-year fixed mortgage and can help with down payment and closing costs as well. To get your key to home ownership, visit www.pinellascounty.org forward slash H is in housing, F is in finance, A is in authority. For more information or comments about the show, give us a call at 727-223-6419. Julian? All right, Carmen, thank you for that. And I said their names, but it's my pleasure to formally introduce our guest. Liliana Rincon is a successful bilingual full-time real estate agent in the greater Tampa Bay area. She's earned her Graduate Realtor Institute Certificate of Designation from the National Association of Realtors. She is continuously enhancing her already vast knowledge in the field by getting involved in key programs that would benefit people looking to purchase and sell properties. Liliana is also a real estate instructor in the First Time Home Buyers Program, where she enjoys explaining the role of a realtor and the important details in a real estate transaction. She serves as a counselor and consultant who provides accurate and up-to-date information and advice so that you can make educated decisions. Originally from Colombia and fluent in both English and Spanish, Liliana is comfortable assisting individuals from all walks of life and approaches each transaction with excitement and energy, regardless of price. Pam Wright is a licensed title agent and senior escrow officer with First American Title Insurance Company. She's been with First American since 1993 and previously worked in the banking industry. Pam graduated from Clearwater High School and attended St. Petersburg College. She's a board member of the Hope Expo and enjoys working with first-time homebuyers. Pam is a Florida native and has lived in Clearwater since 1971. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you for having us here. Yes. So I'll start with Liliana. If you had to choose one reason that anyone thinking of buying a home should use a realtor, what would that be and why? Well, I think the most important reason why you should be represented by a realtor if you are planning on buying a house is a free representation with an expert uh, in the field. Um, this may be the biggest um, financial decision in uh, most people's lives, and you want to do it right. Um, a realtor has the knowledge and the experience needed to walk you throughout the whole transaction uh, process. Uh, we as a realtors have to take uh, continuing education uh, courses at least every two years um, to be um, in order to maintain our licenses and stay current uh, because the documents and the laws are in continuously uh, changing. Um, an experienced uh, professional and negotiator who knows the market can help you save time, 
money and a headache, <laughs> <laughs> really, uh, by helping you making the right um, offer based on a market analysis, uh, fill out the necessary documents, and stay on top of the process. But um, I think there also is really important to know that all this help from the realtor um, is free for the buyer because the real estate commissions are covered by the sellers. Oh, that's interesting. You know, a couple of weeks ago, you and I got together and we were talking about, you know, what you do as a realtor. And something you said really struck me and <laughs> stayed with me. And you said that you always take the time to um, go over the contract with your clients. So would you ex explain to everyone why you do this and the benefits to both the buyer and the seller? Absolutely, Carmen. Um, the real estate documents are written in a specific language, and it's really important for the buyers to understand what they are signing and committing to. Because once they have signed these documents, they are responsible for meeting all the requirements in the agreements and cannot say at that point, I'm sorry, I didn't know what I was signing, I didn't understand. Because um, these are um, low binding contracts. I always discuss the contract uh, with the buyers during our first meeting together because at this point, they are not under the pressure of signing and submitting an, an offer. Then at that point, they can really focus on understanding the documents. And then when it's time to submit the offer, they are ready to sign it. That's good. Um, for the, also, I like to discuss the contract with the sellers uh, very early on as well, uh, so that they understand the obligations and commitments throughout the entire transaction to avoid any surprises later on. Uh, this lets them uh, focus on the offers they receive uh, without the added pressure of trying to understand the documents at that point. That makes good sense. Yeah. So can you explain the difference between acting as a buyer's agent, a seller's agent, and how and as a transaction agent? Can you just, just explain those things? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. As a buyer agent, uh, the realtor is uh, guides and looks after the buyer's interest during the entire process. He or she uh, searches for property, schedules the showings, acquires access to the properties, negotiates the purchase of the property on behalf of the buyer, negotiates any repairs if they are necessary, keeps the buyer informed all the times, and attends the closing with the buyer. As a seller agent, the realtor um, guides and looks after the seller's interest to help the homeowners sell the homes from the moment the seller signs the listing agreement until the closing. The realtor assists in attracting um, qualified buyers until the home is sold, negotiate the highest dollar value for their homes, make price recommendations to price the home competitively, communicates with the seller the entire time, handles all the appointments for the home inspection, the appraisal, the mortgage title uh, work, and takes care of all other details regarding the successful closure of the property. So there's a lot of, from what you just described, there's a mm -hmm. lot of different aspects and things that moving parts to, to buying a house. Mm -hmm. So as an agent on any of those roles, does that ever change during the house buying process? Yes, a licensed realtor's role can change during the course of a transaction, and this could happen for two reasons. One is the need for a single agent to become a transaction broker that will occur when a buyer and seller are working with the same brokerage firm on the same transaction. When a realtor is a single agent for one party, for example, the seller, and he or she begins now working with another party that maybe at this point will be the buyer, um, the agent will want to change to a transaction broker to treat both parties fairly and avoid any conflicts of interest. Or if you are working with the seller as a transaction broker and the buyer has a single agent who is a strong advocate of how to structure a transaction, um, you may legally decide to change hats and become a single agent for your seller so you can provide a stronger representation. And how this can change? Um, of course, we have to disclose everything, and the earlier, the better. Then, uh, from, if you're going to change to a single agent, we have a document uh, that is called a single agent notice that you will present it, and you have to, the, the seller or the buyer, they have to acknowledge and they have to sign it. Or um, if you are going to change to a transaction broker, we have another document that is the consent uh, to, transaction, uh, to transaction broker notice. Those are documents that they have to sign. Hmm. Okay. That 
cleared up some of my questions, but I have more. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> so in a typical transaction, um, who pays your fee? In the state of Florida, the seller covers normally the um, commission for the um, realtor. And what's the best way for buyers and sellers to contact you? Well, they can either call me or text me at uh, 727-710-7540, or they can uh, send me an email at lilianarinconrealtor at gmail.com. Oh, well, thank you. Do you have any questions <laughs> for our <Carmen? laughs> For sure. I'll think of some more as we go on. But I, I wanted to talk to Pam for a little bit. You know, I feel like so many people honestly have no clue what title companies do, how important they are in every single real estate transaction. And so I'm hoping that you can explain what the main functions of the title company are and, and why they are so important. Okay, certainly. Well, title company pays, plays the, an integral role in the processing of real estate transaction. From start to finish, we work with all the parties in the contract, the realtors, the buyers, the sellers, and the lenders to make sure that everything's completed so that we can issue a owner's policy and lender policy of title insurance clear with no exceptions. What is the difference between the lender policy and the title policy? Okay. Well, the uh, owner's policy of title insurance is issued to the buyer of the property. That protects their rights, uh, that there's no liens, no fraud with the title, and basically does the same thing for the lender as well, that the mortgage that the buyer is signing is uh, accurate, that the proper party signed it, and uh, you know, so forth. Because that's, that's what I think is a key thing people don't understand about why you want to use these title companies mm -hmm. is because yeah. it's the legalities of the ownership of the property. Right. And without that in place, mm -hmm. you could wind up with nothing. Yes. <laughs> if you buy a property without own, uh, owner's policy of title insurance, you know, you and there's fraud in the title. You don't have a title policy. You're you're out of luck. You know, you've got this home with problems and the, your lender will not give you a loan without a lender policy so why would a buyer want to buy a property without an owner's policy exactly so i didn't mean to interrupt but that is something oh, that i know okay. is so important so yeah. please continue oh no that's that's good <laughs> so you answered i uh, ask and we kind of got to many of the questions there <laughs> but um yeah so we uh, we establish accurate ownership. We do lien searches. You know, make sure that everything is cleared before we all, um, you know, agree to close the property. And so I know from having be been in the business mm -hmm. that, and something that the clients don't see, but certainly it helps to make them aware of it, that you go through and after you've done all of your searches, you present a list of outstanding items that are needed right. at the closing table. Right. So tell us a little bit of what you see and on those searches and what you present to the lender that say, mm -hmm. okay, here's what has to happen at the closing table. Right. So when we get the contract, we perform a search, a uh, title search of the property. That uh, comes back with a title commitment to us, which we also present to the lender, telling us who we're showing in title that needs to deed out to the buyer, any mortgages they have on the property, if there's any liens, judgments, issues with prior titles, you know, that sort of thing. We also order a municipal lien search to make sure that there's nothing pending with the city and county that could potentially uh, cause a lien on the property. Like a code enforcement right. lien or code something that might be coming up? Mm -hmm. Okay. Utilities. Water is a lienable utility, yep. so we do check to make sure that the water is current. And so if everybody's moving forward, <laughs> then at the closing table, these are all things that have to be cleared and paid for, signed off on. Right. And then part of what you do is make sure all of these documents are then filed correctly in the public record, right? Right. Yeah. Once the closing is completed, then we record. So... You know, we have to make sure everything is recorded in the proper order and, uh, you know, with no issues. Legal descriptions attached, everything signed, witnessed, notarized, that needs to be. So now, as an escrow agent, mm -hmm. what specifically do you do? Okay. Well, um, once the realtors have uh, completed execution of the contract, we accept it. And then we work directly with the lender. So, you know, as we've said, we... we 
get a title commitment. We present that to the lender so that they can see what the legal description is. Mm -hmm. They want to make sure that the buyer is noted and the proper uh, loan amount that we're going to yeah. issue for their <laughs> policy is correct. Okay. Um, you know, and then I clear the title. So we look for mortgages, liens, judgments, you know, any prior parties that might have an interest in the property. And we clear all of the all those items so before we'll close we have to make sure that everything noted on the title commitment has been completed so then um, as we move forward the lender gets a clear to close we prepare the settlement statement that shows the um, amount that is due from the buyer to close uh, we forward that then to the realtors and let them review and then we contact the buyer with the amount that's to close, uh, with wire instructions or instructions on, on the funds that we'll need for closing. Uh, we then uh, receive the mortgage documents from the lender. Okay, we, get, we prepare the deed, documents that we require for closing, affidavits and so forth, and the loan package, we get that all together, and then we meet with the buyers and sellers and their agents and uh, actually sit down and conduct the closing Okay. After after we've signed everything, we um, disperse. So we'll pay the realtors at closing. <laughs> the, yeah, the seller. Sometimes the buyer might get a little refund. Uh, that's not doesn't happen very often. But then we pay everything according to the settlement statement, the lender's instructions. Okay. Um, then we record the deed and mortgage any affidavits and uh, once that recording is completed we issue the owner's policy of title insurance and the lender policy of title insurance okay. and there's a, a lot it's in and, and i don't oh, think yeah. that most people realize how how important these two roles really mm -hmm. really are to a transaction i mean a lot of people think it's they focus in on the lender which is also another obviously without the three of you this isn't going to happen no. but they kind of forget the important roles of the realtor and the title company and this whole entire process and that I mean I, I can never stress to people how important it is to get a good title company right one that is I mean because yes. I've had the misfortune of being involved with title companies that didn't watch the signing didn't get a doc signed appropriately so mm -hmm. if your name is you know John P Right. Jones that you're signing John P. Jones and not John, not John Jones, but making mm -hmm. sure every document is signed correctly and then getting things <laughs> recorded. Right. I've actually had title companies that just blew off recording things in public record. Yeah. And it's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> our, our company's um, guideline on that is to have everything recorded within three days of closing. Sooner, you know, if, if possible, but definitely within three days. Wow. Do you guys ever use the electronic closing? We do. Uh, well, e electronic recording. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yes. Sorry. Yes, we do. And that is great because in here in Pinellas County, uh, we normally get our recording back the same day that we um, send it in. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then we get, you know, response back, and we can print the recording information out, you know, right away. Well, that's perfect. Yeah. So, you know, based on what you guys are saying, because there's a lot of really important steps in this process. So if I'm at the closing table mm -hmm. and as a first time home buyer, you know, it's very exciting right. because you you want to get in your house. But it's also very intimidating because it's all these things that you've probably never heard about or, you know, it's very intimidating. Also, and a stack of paper. Yes. And a, <laughs> and a huge stack of paper. You know, would you encourage that even at this point I ask questions? Absolutely. Because, you know, now's the time to ask questions because once you've signed the documents, then you're, you know, you're locked in. I mean, there's there's not a lot you can change, but you want to make sure that your loan amount is what you expected, your interest rate is what you expected, and the terms. So any questions you have, you, you really need to ask them at closing. And I really need to be reading all the documents and just not take people's words for it, right? That's definitely <laughs> in your best interest. Um, you know, it's it's surprising, but there is, I would say, about 90% of people that just kind of glance over and sign. But I would suggest that, um, you know, you at, it let your title officer know that you'd like to review the documents and if at all possible we'll get them to you early and so you can read over the note and the mortgage and so forth and you know and i strongly recommend that to people because even as many houses have i bought and sold 
I always warn, matter of fact, the last time I closed with you, I warned you. I said it's going to take a little while because I'm reading everything. Right. And, and I still do because it just, I've gotten to the table before and it's all been not what it was supposed to be. And I've mm-hmm. walked out of closings. And mm-hmm. because I'm not signing something, that's not right. And that's right. and I tell people, this is your home, your biggest investment. Yes. So if your loan amount's wrong, your payment's wrong, your interest rate is wrong, and you sign just because you're afraid you'll lose the house, don't sign. Mm-hmm. Don't sign because right. I guarantee you someone's going to fix that. <laughs> if right. you don't sign right. and say, I Absolutely. can't sign until this is right, yeah. phones start ringing everywhere. <laughs> Before you know it, there's new documents transmitted over to the title company, and right. then you can sign the right things. Absolutely, but, yeah. Who, so, in a transaction, who chooses the title company? Seller normally. Yeah, normally a seller does. Uh, it's written in the contracts. Uh, in Pinellas County, it's it's pretty much a standard that the seller chooses the title insurance company. Is there any reason why, and can that ever change? Uh, the main reason why is because the owner's policy is the main policy in the transaction. The lender policy is... The, the second policy, the secondary. Okay. You know, simultaneous issue. So the buyer has, uh, the seller, excuse me, has the higher expense for the policy. So normally they choose it. Um, can it be negotiated? Yes. Um, it can be negotiated in the contract. Usually uh, when it is, then it's negotiated that the, the buyer pays for it and then they would choose the title company. That's something I did yeah. not know. So, mm-hmm. so I'm glad we um, did that. Yeah. Now, should a buyer or seller ever contact you directly, or should they run through one of the other professionals in the transaction instead? Yeah, we we welcome everyone to contact us directly, and you know we're happy to answer any questions prior to closing or and after closing as well. But yes, they can uh, contact us directly. And if they were going to do that, how would they do that? Uh, well, they could call me at the office at seven two seven four four two twenty two hundred, or email me at p a right at first am.com perfect now between the two of you what have we left out what what other important things have we left out that we need to let people know about i know we couldn't have possibly covered everything we just kind of hit the high points so liliana what do you think we might have left out Oh, well, so many things, but I really think, especially for the people who speak other languages, that is really important to understand what they are signing. And at the title company at the moment of the closing, that if they don't know, they don't understand English, that they will bring somebody with them that will be able to translate the documents. Because... As soon as these papers are signed, they're not going to look for me. They're not going to look for her. It's just the person who signed the papers. And it's really important to know what you are signing. Definitely. That's such a good point. That's such a yeah. good point. Yeah, and, definitely. And what yeah. about for you? Anything else we might have left off? Oh, not that I can think of offhand. I think we covered quite a bit, but you know, like Liliana said, is to, to know what you're signing because, I mean, you are agreeing to them to the terms on that day and if there's an error it's you know almost impossible to to change it afterwards especially if it's anything on your terms that's what i was thinking now i have one question for you Mm -hmm. so i was reading on the internet the other day and about reasons to use realtors (laughs) (laughs) and one of the things that came up was something i did not know i always thought that if i went out to realtor.com that i could see the universe of, of properties that were out there anywhere I wanted. But the article said that that is just not always true, that sometimes realtors, number one, they know about some properties that are going to be coming up. Um, they may have access to other properties that don't show up quite yet on Realtor.com, even though they're listed. Help me help me with that. What What's the reality on that? Well, because we know the market, we know the areas, and we have the knowledge of the areas, and not every property goes into the MLS right away. Then if we know the area, we know, for example, the house next door is going to go for coming soon, but cannot be posted on the MLS yet. Then when we have the knowledge of the area, we know that property, then we can tell the buyer, or the, in this case, the buyer, that the property is going to uh, go for sale. And actually, I have sold so many, I have helped buying so many houses like that, that uh, they are not even on the MLS They're kind yet. Of sold before they even get yes, on the MLS. Even get, yes, absolutely. Yeah. But it's because we have the knowledge of the area. And so I, I thought that was really 
a, a key thing is, is to know, I know, because one thing I always tell people is when they're thinking about buying a house, to think of where they want to live. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're moving, maybe you don't like this neighborhood, but you have your eye on this other neighborhood. Drive through it, get familiar with it, and then let your realtor know where you're looking. So, so that you know where to look. So you're not just looking all over the universe. You know that they're interested in this neighborhood. And so I thought that was, and I wanted to check that out because I thought, well, dang, that would make good sense. I definitely want to <laughs> take advantage of a situation like that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And something really important I always tell my buyers, um, like go and drive at night, yep. go or drive during the weekend because what you see during the day is not the same as you see at night, is not the same <laughs> as you see during the weekend. And and I really think that the person who is going to live there, they have absolutely to love that house yep. because they're the ones who are going to make the payments every month. <laughs> Then that they will be excited to be into the house. Then I always check, check for crime, yep. check for the schools, if that is really important. Some people, it's so important to buy the house for the schools and oh, just yeah. be sure that a house belongs to that school that you want. It's something that they have to do on their own. It's like homework for the buyers. Yeah. That is important to do it. It's true. I do that every time. I mm-hmm. actually, um, <laughs> when I first moved down here, I found the cutest little house. It had mm-hmm. everything I wanted. It had been remodeled. It had the pool. It had everything. I could afford it, which was a biggie. <laughs> and it must have been like the third or fourth trip into the neighborhood. Um, it was on a weekend. It was early evening. And because I'd been there later at night, I'd been there early in the morning, I actually was run out of the neighborhood, chased aggressively out of the neighborhood by one of the other people that lived in the neighborhood. And I don't know if it was because they'd seen my car in the neighborhood mm. several times over the mm-hmm. past week to 10 days or what. But they got really aggressive with me. Wow. And I called up my realtor the next day and I said, we got to find a way out of this one because I'm not living in that neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's not the type of neighbors I want. Right. Um, I, and if I live there, are they going to chase me around the neighborhood when I try to come home? <laughs> I mean, it scared me. But that's that's, that's why you tell people to, yeah. to, to look around. <laughs> Absolutely. And something that you cannot change is your neighbor. No, no, you're stuck with them. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like bad family members during the holidays. Exactly. <laughs> well, on that note, we have a couple of moments left to wrap up today's show. It's been a pleasure. I'd like to thank our guests, Liliana and Pam. Liliana is with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, and Pam is with First American Title Insurance Company. And on behalf of Pinellas County Department of Communications, we look forward to having you join us next month. If you missed any part of this show or would like to view past shows, check us out on our website or catch us on YouTube. I'm Julian Hills. I'm Carmen Lemberg. Thanks for joining us and make it a great day. (laughs) 